I want to say hi to everyone and uh, welcome uh, and thank you, Ron, for uh, having us here today. So we're really uh, thankful to be part of this organization. With this, I'm, I will turn off my uh, camera so I can concentrate better. And you guys still see my screen. All right. So today I am going to talk to you a little bit about securing serverless functions. And uh, you might ask, why would she do this when this is a Kubernetes and a container kind of uh, thing? But cloud workloads are actually um, also including serverless functions. So uh, Kubernetes containers, serverless functions, functions as a service, um, code that's running. This is all important. And uh, so this is where I will be talking with you uh, today. I'm uh, actually, uh, my name is Mickey Bolin. I'm a, an ar architect and evangelist with Checkpoint's Office of the CTO. Uh, I've been at Checkpoint for about seven years. I'm an old dog to security, old CISSP, and I uh, do a lot of stuff with that Tripoli. So your 20 minutes adventure begins now. Uh, we're actually going to talk about the four C's of cloud security. You guys already know this, but we're just going to touch on it uh, as a, a level set. Uh, and then I want to talk about big picture and the concept of security as, a, as code. So I want to see what you guys think about security as code and is it doable in your organization? Because in the spectrum of where customers are in terms of like uh, continuous integration, continuous development, they're, they're across the spectrum. There are some customers that are super mature and there are some uh, customers that have been doing DevOps for a long time and are super agile and, and actually doing like DevSecOps. So I'll talk about that. And then we're going to tour Cloud Guard native uh, serverless security. So if you're not protecting your cloud workloads, then look right here. You better have an MIB neuralizer for business and a good story. I'm not sure the sound the sound doesn't come through if you're playing a video off your Oh, it's not coming through. Oh. No, no, okay. Would, Is there any way? Yeah, um No worries. Okay. This is a the, the idea is that in am I MIB, they're actually neuralizing all these people that didn't see anything, right? There's nothing here to see. Look right here and it disappears. Uh, so anyway, that's cool. Um, all right, let's talk about the four C's. Get all, gotta have some fun, right? Gotta have some fun. So the four C's of cloud security model, you guys are probably very familiar with this. This is on Kubernetes uh, site uh, for cloud native. And, you know, I'm an old security dog and we always talk about, you know, layered um, security approach, multi-layered defense in depth you hear all the time. And this is a security principle that's actually tried and true. And it's the same for uh, cloud. So um, the four C's are the cloud provider. So infrastructure, um, then in Kubernetes cluster, um, the cluster, the orchestration cluster components itself, uh, the container is running therein, and then code. Uh, so there are a couple things for this. So there's network security, a bit of this, and then there's a bit of API and web security that you need. And there's a bit of um, specific things that are uh, part of the Kubernetes orchestration, the actual components like nodes, pods, the uh, cube master, all these things. Um, you have to have encryption. Uh, you need to actually ensure that the cluster components are protected themselves and that the applications that run in the cluster are protected. Uh, you need rollback <laughs> based app. Uh, access control authorization um, to the Kubernetes API, authentication, pod security, quality uh, service, and cluster resource management, as well as network policy, security policies, and TLS for uh, for the ingress. Right, you have to provide the the actual network ingress for this. Uh, for your cloud workloads. And then containers themselves in code, they have vulnerabilities. They have underlying code vulnerabilities. They have third-party libraries, uh, third-party vulnerabilities, dependencies. Uh, they actually have signing and enforcement concerns. Uh, we have to also worry about dis, uh, disabling privileged users. And then container runtime and isolation or stronger isolation. And then code is everything, secure coding practices, uh, limiting port ranges, you know, intrusion prevention, uh, third party again, dependency, static code analysis, dynamic probing attacks and so forth. 
So I will, I'm not going to be like, hey, look at Checkpoint. I mean, of course, we're here as Checkpoint. I just want you to know that we're going to dive into security um, of the serverless. But I want you to see that there, we do have a thing. Uh, it's a platform technology strategy. It's called CloudGuard. It's part of our infinity um, architecture story. And we can literally do security across all of these environments from containers, serverless applications, network security, all the way up through the DevOps cycle, any cloud and working with integration with many, many, many different uh, organizations. And at the at the heart of it is threat intelligence. So we're doing runtime and runtime protection for these environments. We have to. And the thing is, if we don't take care of the threat situation, we don't have really good threat intelligence and threat hunting capabilities and be able to block and protect on threats, then we're really doing ourselves a huge disservice. So I just want to mention that. I think sometimes we forget to mention that. Anything that you do from a threat intelligence perspective, it absolutely has to be um, AI. And it has to reduce false positives. We can't, and these environments are super dynamic. We cannot have a ton of false positives. And actually, yeah, Checkpoint has like 30 engines under the hood. And it's stuff that we learn from customers, third-party indicators, our threat intelligence, our researchers, and everything. And we create actionable, actionable protections from all of these. All right, so before we go into serverless itself, which I'm actually going to take you on a virtual tour, uh, it seems like I'm going really fast. I want to talk about DevOps big picture. So in a DevOps environment, which everyone's doing something, you're using either infrastructure as code or you're uh, deploying containers um, with like orchestration tools. You're doing uh, workloads with uh, um, like, you know, configuration management and configuration deployment tools. So I just put up this, this is kind of, a, I stole this from somebody and it's amazing because it really catch, catches everything. It doesn't really say where you have to do these things necessarily, but all these things are where you should be doing security. So from, um, from SASD, DASD, dependency scanning, code vulnerabilities, excessive keys uh, or excessive privile privileges, potentially embedded keys, um, looking at the container image itself. If it has vulnerabilities, ditch it, get a new container image. Um, and then runtime. So we have runtime from physical to virtual, even private cloud on customers data centers to cloud assets and infrastructure functions and, and containers. So this is something that we really should strive to do uh, and as much as we can to build security in or security as code so that when things deploy, they're already, they've already been scanned, they've already been tested. And when things are in runtime, you have the best runtime protection and threat protection because your cybersecurity uh, and your SOC and all your InfoSec teams are gonna demand that from you, especially your CISO and your CIO. So big picture, there's lots of stuff that could be in cloud workloads. This is a huge, huge picture and a lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of things you can do. This is showing like from source code to dev test and then actually testing, release engineering and actually deploying into uh, into production. All of these things at every step, you can literally use Checkpoint Cloud Guard uh, native security for this environment. All right, so let's specifically talk about functions. And I'm going to show Lambda functions. I'm not um, trying to give any special treatment to uh, any cloud provider because we work with with all of them, and uh, we have like a lot of great stuff that we do you know, with AWS. So I just use this, and it's also where we have quite a lot of development. So I wanted to show this uh, to you. This is showing function runtime behavior profiling. So it's something that Checkpoint can do with our Cloud Guard native. We actually can deploy a uh, function as a service or a code, security as code, that basically runs with your, your Lambda functions. It actually assesses the Lambda function and it forms a baseline about the function. And not just the function itself, but the function as a part of a cloud workload. So there's an upstream trigger, there's uh, there are other things happening when the Lambda is spawned and invocated, and then the Lambda talks to different things. It might write to S3 bucket or grab something. It might actually uh, 
be sending data to Kinesis, metadata. So there's lots of things it can be doing. And in this case, it just shows that we're profiling the Lambda function as it runs. And then it takes a couple hundred invocations. Once we profile it, then we know how it acts. And anything that's not like that outside of that is Abby normal. The other thing we can do is actually do active blocking. So we can block threats and we can actually create, I hate to say it, but old school firewall rules. So you can actually put guardrails on your Lambda function. And I'll show you in just a second. Uh, this is, you can allow certain things to communicate only over certain ports. Um, and this is like uh, actually kind of doing firewall, firewall on a stick, if you will, but it's security uh, as, a, as code. And then last but not least, before we dig into it, we can actually run um, static code analysis. So we can actually assess the function and all of its identity and access management, its, its role, its policy, its, its permissions, and all of the things that are in situ with that um, Lambda function. So things that are happening before the trigger and things that are, that, it, that are communicating after API calls. We can actually look at the whole thing in context and see if there's excessive permissions. We can identify that there are excessive permissions uh, or there are embedded secrets, which is, uh, is, is very important. And we can actually we recommend uh, a better policy. And it's all JSON, so you can literally copy and paste. All right, I have about seven minutes. So now I want to just show you a, a demo. This is a YouTube video. You can actually go out and get it. I'm going to run it from here just to uh, preserve in case uh, the env environment would hose up. But this is the like, Cloud Guard native platform. And this is the home dashboard basically showing you uh, all of the things that you can do. And we do everything from containers to Kubernetes to functions, um, fat fat compute, uh, S3 buckets, every cloud asset that we can be basically assess from a compliance perspective. And we can also uh, do threat, threat protection. And this is showing the workloads dashboard and the serverless functions. So I have a serverless function called Great Reads. It's a Slack chat bot. And basically, it's a Lambda function. Uh, you can see where it's located in, in uh, AWS US East 1. Um, there are tabs here, and it shows you that you can look at the uh, function, you can actually do network security, runtime protection, uh, rules and exclusions, and you can view the entity, you can look at the policies. So this actual function is running and we've assessed it and baselined it. And here is another important part. A lot of the people that actually need to see this stuff, they don't know what this workload is necessarily, but they need to see the security components of it. They don't have access to AWS Management Console or Azure portal to look at functions. They can actually see the whole um, context of the function and all the things that communicates from the trigger down downstream. So this is just showing you can scan the configuration itself. We can look for vulnerabilities, embedded secrets, uh, we can also look at deep code flow analysis and we'll suggest that you should maybe change your policy to reduce some of your excessive permissions. We also do uh, behavioral analysis as we talked about and this requires some of this we learn um, just by just doing auto protect but we're not blocking so you have to have the auto protect on which is deploys security as code, which is like another function, we call it function self-protection. And then we can actually start modifying and um, protecting that. So especially in malicious uh, workloads, what, what you have to worry about uh, when these guys are in runtime is injection, API attacks, uh, DDoS attacks, um, intrusion type attacks. So you can see that we have some findings that are, uh, we have a posture score to improve. We have some findings from a, compliance perspective, we have a permissive role. So there's a suggestion for uh, uh, to actually fix this per excessively permissive role. Well, I can get a sip of coffee now for a second. I think I made my video too, uh, too fast. So you can actually copy and paste this. Now, everybody that I work with that they onboard, I have customers that are doing entire serverless. They, like, they were born in the cloud, they're all serverless. 
uh, and they were like, well, you know, we are developing so we can talk to each other and we know what we're doing and we can say, we can assess that this is actually excessive permissions. Like I have, I can do anything with an S3 bucket published and there's some things I can scope in huge organizations where there's different dev teams from security and there's not a security dev or they're just starting now on DevSecOps. We really have to have the teams communicate with each other and actually talk about this. What are the findings? Does it make sense to actually uh, fix or you know maybe restrain the the policy? Uh, credential leakage is huge. This is showing that the, there are hard there are embedded uh, credential in this uh, in this uh, function, and we need to fix that. So that's something that probably not going to be anything to. Uh, there's no discerning that this is not true, this needs to be done. And then the other thing is you can see every attribute, every attribute about the function and the function in context of the workload, we can actually see that uh, entire context and all the attributes that we uh, pull from, uh, from the cloud environment. And this is showing there's a vulnerability. So this is like a Node.js, um, so serialization, a serialized package uh, for Node.js, untrusted data passing through. So having vulnerabilities to a lot of companies, they're still chasing vulnerability management and they do have to actually uh, correct those vulnerabilities. Um, this is showing that you can actually look at when it's in runtime. This is where we're baselining. We whitelist this application and we can say these are the things that this uh, function is doing. Uh, what is it accessing that processes the files, API calls, and then actually resources, which is pretty powerful. Again, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but having everything in one place for the security teams, different stakeholder teams can use this. You can actually take this information and work with your, your uh, cloud development teams to actually improve your score. Um, I'm going to show you here now how you can create a rules and exceptions for your for your uh, Lambda function. You can actually do, you can create, this is the guardrails that we talked about earlier, a few minutes ago. This is where we can actually create like um, access control and specific rules that, and things that can be invoked with this and communicated with this uh, Lambda function. We can also look at the policies, all of the policies that are associated with this and the permissions. And then you can look at this in context again and just look at a, suge a suggested fix where the things that are showing red are the ones that are um, identifying excessive permissions that you could have a, uh, we're kind of the people of least permission, least effective permission, um, you can improve those. And then this is runtime. So now all the threat intelligence that Checkpoint has, Looking at this uh, this Lambda function in runtime, this cloud workload, we can see that there's actually a code injection attack against this. And this is important because this is the thing that a lot of customers um, are seeking is a unification or a completeness of vision of all of their cybersecurity with the threat intelligence and the active runtime uh, attacks in one place. And this is showing an API um, attack an unauthorized service API. It's not part of the functions access list. So these are really good things for the cyber teams and the SOC teams uh, that are within the organization. And if you're doing DevSecOps, would you just make my heart sing if I hear that you're doing it? Because this is what we're trying to get to with security as code, security deploys with your code and runs with your code and all the different stakeholders, even though they have various um, missions, they actually have one singular mission, which is to protect the organization and uh, protect uh, from security events and exposure and risk um, of the risk of exposure um, and heavy, heavy uh, actual um, attacks, which is, which is really the thing that most customers struggle with is that they, uh, they have different teams working at, th at different things and they don't have visibility across the board. So in this, I'm just showing, I think I have like one minute so with this, I'm um, just showing that yeah, you we should finish up right now, Mickey, about yeah. 30. OK. Minutes. All right, cool. So last but not least is just showing the actual traffic explorer with the malicious uh, Lambda function that's running. And you can see all the logging associated with it. So with that, uh, I'll pause this. And I just want to say thank you. Huge well, thank I you. It was fast and uh, extremely fun.